everyone. This is Alice Gao. This is a short video discussing the question in lecture eight on slide twenty-three. How can we represent the XOR function using a three-layer neural network? In the main lecture videos, I already discussed how we can use a perceptron or a single-layer neural network to represent some simple logical functions like and, or, and not, and so on and so forth. So it turns out this question is not super difficult because all you need to do is take the XOR function and break it down into an expression which only involves the logical functions we already know how to represent. And then take that representation and convert it into a neural network. Then you're done. So let's channel our inner logician and try to remember what we learned in the previous logic course, like CS two forty five. How can we represent X or as a combination of and and or and not or all these other simpler logical functions? We can do the following. So the x or function between x one and x two is equivalent to x one or x two. That includes three cases, right? But we need to exclude the case when x one and x two x two are both true. So and it's not the case that x one and x two are both true. So you can see by having this expression, we've broken down x. The exclusive or into an expression just involving and or and not, and turns out we are able to represent all of these using perceptrons. So, in my opinion, having this expression is sufficient for you to figure out the weights in this three-layer neural network. But just so that you have all the information in case you want to review or verify your understanding later. I'm going to create a new page and draw the entire neural network with all the weights, and then also write down a procedure just just to verify that the neural network is representing X four. And also, if you remember from the main lecture videos, then you realize that the solution I'm presenting to you is not the unique solution. There are many ways, many possible ways which can be used to represent the simple. Functions like and or. So these are the ways that I came up with. By the way, I forgot to mention that we are still using the step function as the activation function because that's just the simplest choice that we can use to demonstrate these concepts. So next, I'm going to write down all the procedures to verify that that this network indeed represents the XOR function. This is an expression for h one, and if we write down the truth table, you will realize that h one is representing x one or x two. All right, so here are the expressions for h two, which turns out to be a negation of the and function, and then o one, which is a function of h one and h two, turns out it's h one and h two. So putting everything together, we will see once again that. O one is indeed the exclusive or function. This is just a procedure to show you that it we can derive these weights mathematically using this process and verifying that these weights are correct. You can come up with other possible weights that uh, we can use to represent the X or function as well. This is everything for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.